Exciting. This is not exactly what we would want, uh, but this is what we have for right now. And I'm just excited to worship and praise the Lord with every single one of you here this morning. Amen. We're so thankful for all of our neighbors around us on our north side, on our south side. Give it up for all of our neighbors. We're thankful for them, aren't we? Amen. Our prayers have been with them, and we thank them for allowing us and helping us to uh, do this for about an hour here on Sunday morning. So we're so glad that you are here. We're going to worship the Lord. If you feel the spirit moving, just put your hand out of the car and just start waving it. Clap your hand whenever senior pastor gets up here to preach. Shout amen and hallelujah really loud. And sing as loud as you can here this morning. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to gather together this morning in the church parking lot, Lord, for this drive-in service. Lord, I pray now. That your spirit would fall on every single person that is here, on every single car. I pray, Lord, that you would just help us this morning as we yes. lift you up and worship and praise your name. Amen. Everyone say amen. 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 We're thankful for all of our ushers that's helped us out this morning. We give a hang out to them. We saw this part in an order of fashion. All our worship team up here, we're thankful for them. Come on, let's worship the Lord together this morning.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We believe the Lord is going to move in your car here this morning. Amen. We believe the power of the Holy Ghost is going to fall upon you and your family as you worship the Lord in your cars this morning on this church property. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
this, Lord, to worship and praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Again, welcome to everybody that is here this morning. We are so thankful for each of you. We've been praying for you all uh, during the last six weeks of us unable to have uh, any type of gathering. Thankful that we are, gathered, we are able to gather together today in each of our cars. And so, thank you so much for helping us this morning and staying inside of your car. We're trying to do everything that we are supposed to do according to uh, the governor and the mayor. And so, thank you for helping us with that this morning. We do need to use the restroom. Uh, if you will go right through these middle doors, there can be two people in there at a time, okay? Uh, we're doing that just again to have social distancing and to. So thank you so much. At this time, our ushers are going to come. And they're going to wait upon us this morning for our weekly tithe and offering. Thank you so much for giving this morning. And uh, they'll come around and have masks on. It's not to rob you this morning, but it's to keep you safe. All right. So uh, thank you for your giving. If you do need a tithe envelope, they'll uh, hand those out as well. They have some tithe envelopes. And so if you need one of those. And if you can, whenever they come by your uh, car, just kind of wave out to them so they know to stop and, uh, and gather your offering for your tithe this morning. Thank you so much for giving. God bless you. And looking forward to the rest of this service, looking forward to our senior pastor as he preaches the word of God to this community and to us this morning. God bless you this morning. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Thank you for watching this morning. We're so glad that you've joined us. Welcome, where we're taking Jesus as he is to people as they are. We love you all.
Lord, you have been good to us. And we praise you for that. And good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you. It's so good to see you. I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about how I would begin my message today, and we won't miss coming. Yes, sir. Come and on. Tell it like it is, Pastor. Yes, sir. We missed it. We missed it. Yes, sir. Somebody said, distance somehow makes a heart grow fun. And I think there's much truth in that. I guess the only, the closest thing I can compare with what I have felt during this time is uh, 20 years ago, I was invited to go to the country of El Salvador. And we would go there and we would preach a conference and preach in a Bible college and speak in several churches. I'll never forget when I landed in El Salvador, my senses met with things I had never experienced before in a third world country. The scent, the sights, the sounds were all foreign to me. And as we went through the country, I realized how blessed we are in America. The land of the free and the home of the brave. And I want to tell you, today I pray God bless America. Continue to bless America. God bless America. I remember my eighth day feeling uh, so homesick to see my boys and my wife. And I couldn't wait to get on that plane as much as I hate to fly. <laughs> and we went home. When I landed here in America, the feeling of thankfulness when I landed in Chicago was indescribable. When I finally was able to see my family after those eight days, I breathed a sigh of relief because I was home again and I was with those that I love. In one sense, today, I feel like that we are home again and we are with those that we love. And we thank God for that. Thank you to the mayor that allowed us, that cooperated with us and allowed us to come. This morning, I won't keep you long. I know it's been a while since we've been together, but I want you to come back next week, so I won't keep you long. I want to talk to us this morning for just a few moments on a different frequency. A different frequency. Would you bow your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ? We thank you so much for this privilege you have given us to gather together today. Thank you for our nation. God bless America. Thank you for our president and for our leaders in government, for our mayors, the aldermen, for all of the workers that make this place go forward. I pray protection upon each of them to grant wisdom and direction to them and help us as a nation to pull together. Lord, as we do so, we have been through difficult times and times past, but we have made it, and we will make it through this time, because you are with us, Lord, and we will pull together. Now, be with us as I open the word today. Help me to speak words of wisdom and encouragement to those who are here and listen. And for that, we will praise you in Jesus' name. I sung this morning a different frequency. A different frequency. My text is found in, in the book of Acts, chapter 16. And the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. 
and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's hands were loose. Then in Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Would you read that with me? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What is it that keeps people from difficult times? What is it that causes us to get up once again in the morning and face the day with great perspective, great hope, great desire to see things move forward? What is it that causes a man or a woman to get up after they've been plundered in the battle of their life and not to the canvas for the second time? What is it that causes men and women to hope, even beyond hope, and to trust God, even in the most difficult of situations? I believe that the thing that helps each of these that I mentioned is a different frequency. They look at things in a different way, and they hear things from a different perspective. They are hearing the voice of God as he speaks through his word, as he speaks to their heart, and as he speaks through others. The scripture that we read this morning is the story of two men that are facing uncertain difficulty in their life. These men were preachers of the gospel. Their names, Paul and Silas. They enter into a region of Europe, and as they enter into, the Bible says, a certain city, they meet a group of ladies that are conducting a prayer meeting. And as they conduct this prayer meeting outside by the river, Paul begins to preach to them. And the leader of that group, whose name was Lydia, she was the first to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she is baptized, and God fills her with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that this lady then joined with Paul and his silence. And she invited them into her home, where they began to conduct her Bible meetings. People came from all around, and evidently it must have turned into something that was very, very well known. The Bible says that uh, Paul and Silas were out one day in the marketplace area. There met them a woman that was possessed by a demon spirit, this demon spirit. And she began to tell them about themselves. It wasn't long until Paul turned to where she was at, and he rebuked that spirit in her. And she was delivered from the things that she had suffered for a long time. The Bible says this woman was a fortune teller. She worked for a man that, uh, that made much money off of her, telling the future of those that would come there. Well, when she became saved, when she embraced the gospel, the Bible says that she stopped doing what she had been doing. She stopped practicing sorcery and witchcraft, and astrology and reading others' future. The Bible says that her masters were getting so upset because of this transformation in her life that they began to find fault with Paul and Silas. They began to find fault with the church. When they couldn't find any other fault with them, they began to say that they're stirring up trouble in our city. And so they gathered a crowd of people around them and together. They began to shout at them until finally, the Bible says that those that were in charge, they arrested Paul and Silas. They were successful in turning the people against them, and this led to their arrest. Verse 22 of chapter 16 tells us that Paul and Silas were stripped of their clothes, and they were beaten in front of this crowd. They had done nothing worthy or to cause any of this. They were just telling people of the love of God, the power of Jesus Christ, and how they were brought to see them. Oh yes, they flew in the face of those that were standing in places where they should be. Because they told them what the word said. Because they preached what God had given them, they became angry and they said, we have a right to do what we're doing, but you have no right to tell us that we are wrong. So it's very similar to the way in which we live today. And yet the Bible says they preached. They preached the word of God in love. They spoke the truth in love. And those that embraced it, those that believed, 
They were saved, and there was a mighty transformation that took place in their lives. The Bible says in verse 23 that then Paul and Silas were placed in jail. They were put in stocks and bonds, which means that they were fastened to one another, probably to the floor or to the wall, so that they could not move around. And it seems like that these men should have just sat there and felt sorry for themselves because of all the problems that they were facing. And yet, they were tuned to a different frequency. There was another frequency. There was another voice. There was another uh, hope that was given to them. So that the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And you know what? Each and every one of us who are saved, you have a trust in God. You're living for the Lord. Others are watching what you do in the most difficult moments of your life. Will they turn and trust God even in the bad times? Will they say, I'm not going to turn my back on him, even though I don't understand, I'm still in the palm of his hands, and God is going to work us through the situation. That's really the way it was. So the Bible says that at midnight, Paul and Silas, instead of feeling sorry for themselves, they sang and they prayed unto God Almighty. It wasn't just lip service. It wasn't just a song that came from their mouth. But it was a song that resonated in their hearts, came from who they were and who they trusted in. I know that whenever I came out here this morning, and, and I'm sure that you felt the same way, when that first song began to be sang today, I felt a resonance in the hearts of each and every one of you as you said, this isn't just from my mouth. This is from the bottom of my heart. Amen. This is with my whole heart and with my whole mind and with my whole strength. That's what we have done. And in that time, the Bible says God came near to them. Verse 26 says there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. We rejoice when we read such stories, don't we? Right. And we thank God for that. And it builds faith in each and every one of our hearts. But my question is this. How do people continue to go forward in times of trouble like that? How do these men, who are trying only to do what God wanted them to do, minding their own business, doing what God was asking, how did they make it through? That's the question I asked this morning. Job chapter 1 and chapter 2 is another interesting story about a man whose book bears his name, Job. Job was a wealthy man, the Bible says. The Bible says that he was so wealthy that he was richer than any other person in the land during his day. I say that's pretty wealthy. And yet with all of the wealth that Job had, that wasn't his highest accomplishment. That's not what Job trusted in. Right. The Bible says not only was Job wealthy, and not only was Job respected and revered in his time, but the Bible says Job was a man who was upright, and he feared God. That was the most priceless character trait in this man's life. He trusted God, he was upright, and he feared Almighty God. The Bible says that this man was just about perfect, you might say. It seems that he was also a generous man. I don't know that I've met any perfect man in my life. One lady, whenever I said that to, she said, oh yeah. Or one man that, uh, that heard me whenever I said that, those words, he says, yeah. He says, I've never met him. He says, but the only perfect man that I ever knew about was my wife's first husband. <laughs> and we laugh about that and we say that. But the Bible says this man was perfect. I believe that that doesn't mean that he did everything right, but his heart was towards God, and he wanted to do what God wanted him to do. Well, the story goes on and says that Job was a generous man, and it summarized this man's life by saying he was great. So great was he that he was the greatest of all the men in the East, is what the Bible says. Job chapter 1 says that he was so great that God began to brag on him. We like it when people brag on us, don't we? How would you like to have God brag on you? Before you say amen, yes, be careful. Because once Job began to be bragged on by God, 
the Bible says that the devil heard that. And he says, Job just fears you because you have a hedge about him, because you're protecting him, and because everything is going great in his life. Who wouldn't love you? Who wouldn't trust you? Plenty of money, his family as well, gets to go wherever he wants, he's got the respect and the reverence of the community. Who wouldn't love you? Who wouldn't serve you? He says, but if you let me touch what he has, and you let me touch his body so that it breaks down, Job will curse you to your face. Well, the story goes on to say that Job, in fact, he was submitted to some very difficult things. Job lost all of his family in natural disasters and calamities. He lost his wealth, he lost his health, and finally he lost the respect of his family, right. his wife. Right. In that moment came these famous words that have been preached about and shouted for years. Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord and not evil? Naked came I into this world, right. and naked shall I return. Yes. The Lord gave, and the Lord shall take away. But blessed be the pain of the Lord. Right. The battle continued in his life for a long time after that. But when it was finally over, and God stepped in, he vindicated Job, the Bible says. How do I know that? Because the Bible said that Job had more children, and the Bible says that his daughters were not only good, but the Bible says his daughters were the fairest in the land. What that means to me is that they were nicer looking than any other women that you would find at that time. But then he goes on to say that Job had twice as much property and money as he did when this problem first began. He received all of his wealth back and twice as much. And again, we rejoice over this passage, don't we? But what kept this man going through this trial? What kept Paul and Silas? The answer is, they were tuned to a different frequency. They were listening to the voice not in this world, but the voice that created this world. Amen. And the God that will one day call us to this world. Amen. I realize it's been difficult for the last six weeks, hasn't it? I realize that we have not had things the way we desire. We've had to say goodbye to loved ones as they have passed on. There's been uncertainty and unrest. But in spite of the news that has been bad, 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 in spite of the conflicting reports, in spite of feelings of loss and defeat, the child of God, the believer, they are tuned to a different frequency, right. and they believe that God is still on the throne, Amen. and that God still has everything in his control. Amen. Well, Metcalf, our dear brother, who passed away about four weeks ago, was an elder in this church for 20 years. We love him with all of our hearts. And uh, he made our church better. He made our community better. But he had suffered sickness for the last four years and steadily declined. And five weeks ago, the Lord said, Why? You've been walking for a long time towards me. But you're closer to home than you are to where you came from. So why don't you just go on ahead and come on with me. And we'll spend the rest of the day together. Right. Someone said, well, why, did, why would the Lord say we'll spend the rest of the day together? The reason why is because there's no night in heaven. Amen. It's the city where the land is the light. Well, Lord Metcalf, when he was here, I'll never forget his love for wanting to tell people about the things of God. And he would tell me many times, he would say, Pastor, we're running on a different frequency. <laughs> yeah. And I said, okay, brother. And he said, it's like this. I used to have a hand radio. And on that hand radio, you have to have special antennas to reach out. And he said, sometimes when you weren't really getting a good connection like you need, you had to go out and you have to turn that antenna towards the north or the south so that uh, you could get good reception. I've had a few cell phones like that. How about you all? Where I've had to go outside when people couldn't hear me. I think Brother Ancona still has one. <laughs> you had to go outside when people couldn't hear you. And then you have to raise your hand and turn this way. Okay, I got it now. So you'd be standing there talking like that. 
But it's because we weren't catching that frequency right. And he would say, we're in a different frequency. And when he said that, his eyes would light up as he spoke of his God and the realm of the Spirit walking with God. Paul said it well. To as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's the key. You've got to hear from God. You've got to listen to what He's saying through His Word, through His ministry, and through His Spirit. I've stood the grace I have many, and I'm putting my clothes in all. And as they have said their final goodbyes to those that they love, I've watched as, uh, as the tears have rolled down their face. And I've watched them as they have said painful goodbyes. And I watched them as their hearts were broken. And it wasn't that they had any less sorrow than those that others that were there, or any less grief. But there's one thing that distinguished the people of God and the believers from those that had no belief at all. And this is that. They were tuned to a different frequency. Right. They realized that whenever I say goodbye here, it's not a final goodbye. But it's a so long for now. As Paul said, those that are believers are tuned to a different frequency. And so he said, that you sorrow not, even as others with sorrow which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again from the dead, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Yes. This be saying to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself so descend from heaven. We understand that because we are tuned to the frequency of God and his word, we'll meet our loved ones on the other side, just beyond the eastern gate, as the old song says. In close with this, the story was told of a game that was being played in, in Badger Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin, in 1982. The team was losing, for Madison that is, and uh, each time the game would stop though, and the play, the play would be suspended. A crowd of about 60,000 people, they would rise to their feet, and they would shout, making the stadium alive with excitement. The reason for this was, many of those that were attending that football game, they were tuned to another station another frequency. For you see, while they were in that football game, their radios were tuned, listening as the Milwaukee Brewers defeated the St. Louis Cardinals in 1982 in the third World Series game. The game they were watching may have been losing, but they could shout anyway because they were tuned to another station. Their team may have been losing, but they were tuned into something better down the road. And so I say to you this morning, the reason why Paul and Silas could go through that terrible ordeal that they went through, and yet at midnight sing and pray and lift up the name of the Lord, they were tuned to another frequency. It looked like they were losing where they were at, but they were tuned to the frequency of heaven. And God was saying, I'm still in control. Right. I Amen. still have the whole right. world in my hands. Right. In me, you live and you move and you have your being. Right. God was saying that. Job, it looks like you're losing the battle here. But Job was tuned to another frequency. Amen. That's why he could say, So receive good at the hand of the Lord and not evil. Naked came I into this world, and naked shall I return. But blessed be the name of the Lord. And so this morning, as we come to a close of this service, I want you to know that God is still in control. Yeah. Amen. I want you to know Amen. that that's not that way just because I have said it. But He has said, I am Alpha right. and I am Omega. Yes. I'm the beginning Amen. and I am the end. Amen. I'm He which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. The Bible says in Psalms 91 and 15 that he shall call upon me and 
I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. You say, what's that? That's a different frequency. Oh no, everybody's going to die. Oh no, everybody's going to be distanced from everyone from here on out. Oh no, our economy is going to be totally flat and ruined. I choose to listen to a different frequency. Amen. Understanding that he said, when I call upon him, he will answer me. He said, I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you. I will deliver you. And he said, I will. And honor him. This frequency says, now abides faith, hope, and love. This frequency says, God has never had his back up against the wall, and he is fighting for us. This frequency says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many ministries. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. This frequency says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Which frequency are you on today? Are you on the world's frequency? Have you ever been born again? Well, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but that's good. That's a wonderful step, my friend. Simply saying, I believe in him does not make you saved at all. You must do something about that belief that you say you have in him. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you and I could be saved. But for me to say, okay, I believe he died on the cross and thank you for that, you'll not be saved just because of that. But you have to allow that faith and belief in God and what he did on the cross to move you to embrace the gospel. And here's the gospel. The gospel is repent. That means asking God to forgive you of your sin. Lord, forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me for the words I've said, for the actions I've taken. Your word says it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should believe on him and receive eternal life. You said that you did not send your son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And we believe that today, Lord. So we repent. Repent and just ask God to forgive you. He said, well, I've asked other people to forgive me and they won't. That's the difference between other people and God. God will forgive you every time. That's right. Every time. Amen. If you mean it from your heart and you have faith, He'll forgive you every time. Somebody said, Will God forgive me for ABC? Yes, God will forgive you for ABC, but not only that, God will forgive you for XYZ and all the letters in between. <laughs> That's how much God loves you. He said, All right, I've done that. Well, then you need to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Not just sprinkle, but you need to be baptized in verse of water, having the name of Jesus called upon you. Then God will do something in your heart called filling you with the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. When that happens, you'll have an experience like Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all of the apostles had that followed Jesus, and many more that were there in the upper room in Acts chapter 2. You'll begin to speak with another language as the Spirit of God gives you the others. You say, well, what will that do then, preacher? Here's what it will do. It will tune you in to the frequency of heaven. And so now instead, and now instead of walking in hopelessness, you will walk in hope because of the frequency that you're tuned into. So which frequency are you on? I pray it's upon God's. Amen. We have a couple people that we're going to baptize today. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. And come, so we want to be baptized. Now you just walk and could, could watch that. Actually, you, if you can watch it on Facebook through the live stream. But uh, I'm so glad that you're here. And what song do we have? Everybody playing with me. That's the name of the Lord. Yes, let's sing that. Let's sing that in closing. Did you enjoy this part of the service today? Amen. Amen. Have you received hope and help? I hope that you have. I know that you have. All right. All right. Blessed be your name. And that is merciful when the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Found in the desert place. Blessed be your name. 
Everybody that watched online, we love you all if you're still on there. Hope you had a, a great day today. Thank you for worshiping the Lord with us this morning. Thankful for each and every one of you. Uh, we love you all. Enjoy this beautiful day that God has given you. We hope you have a great week. Hope to see you tonight, 5 o'clock online. God bless you all.